Okay, in this video we're going to look at the notion of a partial derivative. So let's say we've got a function of two variables, x and y. We can define two partial derivatives as follows. So we say this is the partial of f with respect to x, and that's the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h comma y minus f of x over h. So notice we're taking our limit in the x component of this function while we're leaving the y component fixed. And then we can define the partial of f with respect to y by the limit as h goes to zero of f of x y plus h minus f of x y over h. So again, we're taking this limit as the second or the y component is changing, but then the x component is staying the same. Okay, good. So let's look at uh, an example. Let's find the partial of f with respect to x and y where we have this uh, nice polynomial function and we'll use the definition of the partial derivative and then we'll see that there's a quick trick to do this very easily. So here we'll take this function to be x squared y plus y squared. So let's uh, find df dx first. So that's going to be the limit as h approaches zero of, so we need to plug x plus h everywhere we see x over there. So that's gonna give us x plus h squared times y plus y squared. So this in yellow brackets is our f of x plus h minus f of x, so that's gonna be x squared y plus y squared. So I'll put that in brackets as well and we have all of this is over h. Great, so let's see how that simplifies. That's gonna give us the limit as h approaches zero of, so we can multiply this out. This is x squared plus two xh plus h squared all times y plus y squared minus x squared y minus y squared. So there I have distributed the minus sign through. Now let's see what can simplify. Notice that this y squared and this y squared is gonna simplify. And then also, if we multiply this x squared by this y, that is going to simplify with this term. Okay, great, and now notice what we're left off with is something that we can factor an h out. And I should point out that this y is still going to distribute onto these two terms. So that's going to give us the limit as h approaches zero of 2xyh plus h squared y all over h. Good, so we get that from distributing this y through. Now let's factor an h out of this. That's going to give us the limit as h approaches zero of h uh, times 2xy plus hy all over h, but now notice these h's cancel, and we let h approach zero, and that's gonna give us two x y. Great, so now let's look at this partial derivative with respect to x, with respect to what our function was, and notice essentially what happened is we treated x as a variable and y as a constant. Notice if we do that, the derivative of this first bit is 2xy, and the derivative of that second bit is zero. So that's why we get 2xy for this partial derivative. Okay, I'm gonna clean up the board and then we'll do the other partial derivative. Okay, so next let's find this other partial derivative, in other words, the partial with respect to y. So that's gonna be the limit as h goes to zero, and then we need to do f of x comma y plus h, so we're gonna replace everywhere we see y with y plus h. So that's gonna give us x squared times y plus h plus y plus h quantity squared. So that's like our first bit, that's our f of x comma y plus h minus x squared y plus y squared. Great, and that's our f of x y. And so all of this is divided by h. Okay, so notice this is gonna give us the limit as h goes to zero of, so let's do some simplification here. That's gonna give us x squared y plus x squared h plus y squared plus 2yh plus h squared minus x squared y minus y squared. So that's what we get from multiplying all that out and then distributing the minus sign.
Okay, now let's see what can cancel. Notice this term is going to cancel this term. This term is going to cancel this term. And we're left with something that we can factor an h out of. So that's going to give us a limit as h goes to 0 of h times x squared plus 2y plus h all over h. So now these can cancel, and now we can let h tend towards 0, and that's going to give us x squared plus 2y. But now if we look at the extreme beginning and end of this, with respect to the original function, notice this is just what we got if we treated x as a constant and took the derivative with respect to y. Okay, and that's actually going to be the quick way in order to calculate these partial derivatives. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll state that and do a couple other, other examples. Okay, so the observation that we made when we did these calculations by the definition of the partial derivatives is that if we want to calculate df dx or the partial of f with respect to x, we can treat y as a constant and take the derivative with respect to x. And then if we want to take the partial of f with respect to y, we do the opposite. So we treat x as a constant and take the derivative with respect to y. So I want to do this last example before the end of the video. So let's let z equal the natural log of x over y. So x and y are independent variables and z is our dependent variable. So it's slightly different notation, but we want to find dz dx or partial z with respect to x and partial z with respect to y. So here we're going to have to use the chain rule because we have this function x over y composed inside of this natural log. So let's calculate dz dx first. And now notice using the chain rule, we're going to get 1 over whatever's inside this function. So that's going to be 1 over x over y times the derivative with respect to x of, and I'm going to write this a slightly different way, 1 over y times x. And I did that so I can think of 1 over y as a coefficient of x. And whenever we take a derivative of a constant, remember 1 over y reviewing is a constant, times x, we'll just get that constant. Like, for instance, the derivative of 2x is just 2, the derivative of 3x is just 3, and so the derivative of 1 over y times x is just 1 over y if we're doing that as a partial derivative with respect to x. Okay, so that being said, let's simplify this a little bit. So here we can just take the reciprocal, and that's going to be y over x times, like we said before, that's going to be 1 over y. So the answer in the end here is 1 over x. Okay, great. And so now let's do uh, the partial of z with respect to y. So notice, we're going to start off the same. We have to take the derivative of this natural log function. That's going to be 1 over x over y. And now we have to take the derivative with respect to y of this inside function, which is x over y. So I'm going to write that in a slightly different way. I'll write it as x times y to the minus 1. So we're thinking that x is the coefficient of y to the minus 1. And now we can just use the power rule on this. So let's see what we get when we do that. So again, we can just take this reciprocal here. That's going to give us y over x. And now we're going to have this is multiplied by x times. Now take the derivative of uh, y to the minus 1. That's going to give us minus 1, y to the minus 2, or in other words, minus 1 over y squared. Okay, good. But now notice all that simplifies down to just minus 1 over y. Okay, good. So we've taken those two partial derivatives. Now before we finish this video, I want to introduce some different notation for taking partial derivatives and do one more example. Okay, so here's the notation I want to introduce real quick before we do our last example. So if z is a function of x and y, and so we're saying z equals f of x, y, then the partial of f with respect to x, we could write it this way. We could write it as the partial of z with respect to x, or we could also write it as this f with a subscript of x. Those are three common ways to write this partial derivative. And then similarly, we have three common ways to write the partial derivative with respect to y. So we have 
partial f with respect to y, partial z with respect to y, or f sub y. And then we have these second partial derivatives also. Notice there are going to be three second partial derivatives. There's this pure partial derivative in the x direction, or with respect to the x variable. There's another one with respect to the y variable, where we just switch all of these x's with y's. So notice that's the derivative with respect to x of the derivative of f with respect to x, which we write as partial of f squared over partial x squared, or the same thing with z's, or f sub xx. And there's, then there's this mixed partial. And you might think that there's two mixed partials for in either order, but those are the same under most circumstances, and that's going to be a theorem that we uh, state later. And so the partial with respect to x of the partial with respect to y, we can notate that as f sub x y. Okay, good. So I'll clean up this board and we'll look at one last example. Okay, so for our last example, we want to consider this function of three variables. So once you've done more than one variable, they're all pretty much the same. So our function is x cubed y z squared plus 2xy, and we want to calculate two things. The first one we'll start with is this mixed partial derivative. So we can denote that by f sub xy. Recall the notation from the last board. So that's going to be the partial with respect to x of the partial with respect to y of our function, which which is x cubed y z squared plus 2xy. Great. So the first thing we want to do is the partial with respect to y, which means we look at this function and we think of y as the variable and everything else as the constant. So, and then we can use the sum rule here. So this is going to be the partial with respect to x of, so the partial of this one with respect to y is just going to be x cubed y squared. So we have x cubed y squared, and then the partial of the second term with respect to y is just 2x. Great. Now we're all set to take the partial of that with respect to x, so that's going to give us 3x squared y squared plus 2. And that's our solution, so that's our mixed partial derivative. Now the next thing we want to do is take the partial with respect to z and then plug in the point 1, 1, 1. So notice the partial with respect to z evaluated at 1, 1, 1. That's going to be the same thing as d by dz of this thing. So let's see, x cubed y z squared plus 2xy. And then we're going to plug in the point 1, 1, 1. Great. So, but here we think of x and y as a constant and z is our variable. So notice this whole thing, this 2xy is just a constant, so the derivative of that is 0. And here we're going to get um, 2x cubed y z because we took the derivative of the z part. And then we're going to evaluate this at x equals 1, y equals 1, and z equals 1. Okay, but that's going to obviously be 2 times 1 times 1 times 1, so that's going to be 2. Okay, so that's a good place to end this video.